Thank you. Okay, now it's, uh, it's time for my regular uh, closing comment, connecting the dots. Today, the dots I want to connect are the ones that define the outer boundaries of metanomics. You know, our challenge is to define those boundaries broadly enough that we can remain an influential voice for our community, uh, uh, people who are taking virtual worlds seriously uh, as that community grows, as the technology grows, and, uh, and as it, like kudzu, uh, starts taking over more and more aspects uh, of, of not just technology, but of our work and uh, social lives. On the other hand, we still need to be narrow enough that we're not attempting to be all things to all people, or even worse, uh, trying to become experts uh, in everything. There are countless podcasts and webcasts about the Internet as a whole, but uh, I'm proud to say there's still only one metanomics, and we want to uh, keep that position uh, as a leading voice in this growing uh, industry. The heart of metanomics remains, I think, as I defined it back in September of 2007, uh, business and policy in the so-called metaverse of virtual worlds. Uh, you know, what is a virtual world? Every conference I have attended, and uh, Paul Letts uh, as well, uh, includes a, a heated debate on the definition of a virtual world. Does it need three dimensions? Does it need avatars? Does it have to have commerce? Are games virtual? virtual worlds, uh, or are they something different? You know, these debates are more of a blessing than a curse for metanomics, uh, and I take personally a very broad uh, perspective on this. As long as someone has a reasonable justification for calling a platform a virtual world, metanomics is going to be there to take a good look at it, try to understand who's taking it seriously and what they are getting out of it. But it's more than just defining virtual worlds. We, we also need to decide uh, when we should be spending time on the business and policy uh, of the Internet as a whole, and uh, as we did earlier today with the Cybersecurity Act, and more generally looking broadly at social movements that might be affected uh, by technology. As I mentioned at the top of the hour, just about every enterprise and consumer relies on the Internet, but none quite so much as those of us who are exploring virtual worlds. Uh, to us, and especially to people who have immersed themselves in worlds like Second Life, the Internet is an ocean we call home. So we won't be covering just any Internet technology. We're going to continue to view this ocean through the lens of our particular school of fish. Uh, so, for example, for many users of virtual worlds, social networking sites like Twitter, Plurk, and Facebook are, are really just an integral component of their uh, businesses and their personal lives. And we can't understand how these people are taking virtual worlds seriously without understanding how they're using these new technologies. From today's conversation with uh, Paulette and Rocky, you can see that there are a variety of cybersecurity issues that are of particular interest to virtual world uh, users, and we're going to continue taking a close look at the practices and policies that can pre protect us from uh, tropical storms and determined sharks. Uh, and, uh, and finally, you know, we'll be casting our policy net more broadly than that. We can't understand the business case for virtual worlds uh, without understanding, for example, the recent energy bill, which uh, may make carbon emissions far more costly than they are now. Uh, whether that's a boon for virtual worlds is, uh, I think, a more open question than many virtual world users seem to think. You know, sure, traveling is expensive. But virtual worlds have their own carbon footprint, and I don't think we yet have a good handle on just how big those feet are. Uh, so this is going to be an exciting season for metanomics as we grow into the new resources uh, Remedy Communications is bringing to bear. So uh, I invite you all to uh, come on in. The water's fine.